Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Drew Stories, episode 16. I'm Drew Brooks, and with me, a very, very special guest. Nazanin, how are you? I am not Drew Brooks. No, you're not. I'm not. I'm no. Nazanin Noor. That's it. I'm great. I mean, yeah? I got a spicy margarita. <laughs> It's this Margtown. My second one. Cheers. We're getting into Margtown. <laughs> We're in Margtown, and it's been fabulous. You mm. make a wonderful spicy margarita, Thank I must so say. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Try to act like we haven't been talking for an hour already. We haven't. I just got here. <laughs> yeah. We have not reviewed anything. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. But uh, I wanted to say welcome. That's Thank first you. and foremost to you. Thank you. Welcome to whoever is with us today mm-hmm. and for eternity. Thank you. And... For, I'm just going to dive right into Let's it. Let's dive. Okay. I'm loving it. Okay, Let's dive yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how many people know this or who knows this, or, or but you, you were a judge on the Persian version mm-hmm. of, if you'd allow me to say that without, yeah. Of course. Uh, of America's Got Talent, but wasn't it something else? Like, wasn't the original from Britain? So it was Britain's Got Talent. It was uh, originally from, yeah, Psycho <laughs> Entertainment, which is Simon Cowell's company, oh, and right. Fremantle Media. Okay. Um, and then so our production company and network uh, got the franchise right. So it's another, you know, because they have like yeah, Asia's Got Talent. Everywhere. So we are Persia's Got Talent in, in Persian language. I love that. And, and you're yeah. a judge. You were a judge. I was a judge. Well, can I ask you, I've got a, a, a litany, but I'm going to keep yeah. it to a few. Yeah. First and foremost, mm-hmm. were you the kind one? Were you the critical one? Mm. Or were you the mean one? Because um, that's I, the three flavors usually on stage, right? Like, okay. What's your flavor? <laughs> um, I was definitely the one that cried a lot. Um, <laughs> so people got very, to you. Very sensitive. The stories got to you. The stories got to me. And then, you know what it is? It's like you're an actor too. For sure. You know I what hope it, so. I, yeah, well, sometimes. <laughs> on a good day, you are. Um, you act like you like me, so that's good. Um, <laughs> No, but like we know what it feels like to go into an audition room yeah. in a casting room in a yeah. director session, and, you know, and there's people yeah. just staring at you and yeah. I would feel their emotions and I would feel that nervousness and stress. And also some of some of the performances really like this really got to me, you know, well, voices and music and all that kind of stuff. It's, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I'm glad you said it. It's because I think, dare I say, you might have a heart. Oh, my God. I, Which is. Yeah. Do I? Yeah. After they, COVID, I still do. That's good. Yeah. yeah. They call that a condition in this town. <laughs> yeah, it's pre-existing. Um, <laughs> in LA, for sure. But, you have a heart? But oh, okay. It's touching all the stories. That I think I'm a human interest fanatic. I yeah. watch all of these news programs for that very thing. Yeah. But I also think human stories and the brushes with success are so... Uh, it's great. Yeah. Especially because I feel like the opportunities are so rare. So it, to me, it's really special. There's one... Okay, so uh, you you carefully dodged my question. Wait, you, you did were I not, not the answer? Mean one? Well, let me ask. I, I was not mean. I <laughs> wow, think that you know how to work the press. Lady. No, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, I was. I feel like I I tried to just like keep to my uh, to my roots, just be myself. Okay. Which was let me connect to this contestant yeah. how I can through emotion, through their performance, through their story. Okay. Um, and I tried to do my best to like really give positive feedback as much as I could as far as like hey these are the really good things right. here are some things you might work need to work on to get better um, and you know what happens with these shows too they don't air everything you say of so it's not. like I see certain contestants and I'm like I know I told them more than that but, but we're they, gonna keep they gave you yeah. it's, this is you know this is Nazanin's storyline <laughs> she's got the tears <laughs> close up close yeah, up yeah, yeah. yeah. let um, her just work the waterworks yeah, exactly cut no. back to him all sad too exactly right. and he then lost. the music comes yeah. in <laughs> Um, and you're going home. Um, but yeah. yeah. If, I, if you don't mind me interrupting for a second, it does feel like if I were on stage doing that, because that is, and we do know that feeling. Yeah. Because you're like, all right, man. And it is a show where they know that in the auditions, that's practically some of the the darkest meat, as yeah. you would say. like yeah. Or the like juiciest parts yes. of it, it seems. It can go really south really fast. Really fast. Or quick. it can blow you away. Yeah. So I love the... Uh, not knowing, right? And there's That's this, exciting. Well, there and there was this one I remember, um, and he didn't make it to air. He was a stand-up comedian. Oh, they, they put him in a montage with other okay. comedians. And he so just... So they gave him some time. They gave him some time. He 
lost his shit on stage. He lost his, um, I was going to say the Persian word. He lost his tamarcos, his concentration. There you go. He You're lost, learning stuff. Yeah, guys. Tamarcos <laughs> means concentration. He lost his concentration. He lost his, you could just, I just saw the emotions draining right. from his face and he felt so bad and I felt I was like oh my god I just want to help you and and he looked at me and all the judges had red buzzed him and I was giving him a chance to like try to get the per like just get it out you know like I'm just giving you this chance and he looked at me and he goes you can just hit the red buzzer too and my heart broke and I was like listen I'm hit I'm not hitting it for a reason I want you to finish this because and I actually went and found him backstage I wait we, we wrapped the, that episode and I went and I found him oh this is juicy and BTS I, right here yeah it's behind the scenes <laughs> I went and I found him and I was like listen I just wanted to tell you personally that like I know stand-up comedy is hard we've done comedy on stage oh, you've done it too I've done it it's fucking difficult it's a craft guys it's a craft yeah. and then you're feeding off the energy of the crowd so Definitely. if you get three red buzzers I totally understand why it's going to break you right. but I told him I go listen if you want to make it in this world and right. in this industry and you really want to work at this professionally you can't let something throw you off like that you got to oh, keep yeah. even if it's bad go to the end so that you did it and then you know how to get better after that I you gave up in the more. middle of it and that was your problem and he actually thanked me <sighs> So but I hope he did put, swallow that one because that's hope he worked on himself. Actually, I really do. Maybe <laughs> well, we'll know, see him in season two. <laughs> well, let's yeah. good luck to him. Mm -hmm. I want I want ultimately success. And maybe this was because I feel like in trajectories, right? There's these arcs. Yeah. Maybe he's just on that other side of it. And sooner or later, he's going to get to hear and he's yeah. going to blow our minds. Yeah, it's totally it's yeah. absolutely possible in comedy. I wouldn't say it necessarily in music. I feel like when you're tickling the ivories, yeah. I know whether or not you're going to. Yeah. yeah. Are you dazzling. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Get out of the way. So the, 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 okay, so that's fascinating. Yeah. I do think, is there one that was just the heartbreaker? The one, was it, or better put, was it, did you expect the winner right away? Because I feel like. No. Uh, oh. I did not. There so were. That's a reason to watch right there. There were three or four contestants and okay. they're right here and I see their face and I talk to some of them. Okay. Um, you know, and the funny thing is I can't talk about the voting know, and all that I and know. so uh <laughs> contractual I'm obligations giving you these, i'm giving I know. you these uh, vague questions but vague. there's a Keep standout for you there were definitely like th three standouts oh. and um i just love them and <laughs> i know but i know you're gonna cry again i know i <laughs> I love it. It's like being on the show. <laughs> Let me just sanitize my hands. No, I really love them, but I see such talent in them mm -hmm. that, and this is something I have to explain too, because a lot of maybe your viewers don't know. What? Um, growing up Iranian, yeah. you aren't exactly encouraged to go pursue the arts. Oh. I got a degree and I was pre-law. So I was like, let me get this out of the way. Let me do this. I even worked in corporate litigation for a while. Right. And I always did theater and music growing up. But it was always like, oh, that's your hobby. It was a, it would Culturally be not viable. Culturally, like, right? yeah. Not, like, not uh, stable. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and then, you, I, and then I think about it. Our parents immigrated here from Iran. Yeah. They did the struggling so that we wouldn't. So for them to see their daughter like, okay, you have a degree it's and like you're final choosing insult. to go <laughs> struggle. Yeah, they're like. If you could just not do that, that'd be fantastic We just for need us. this one yeah. thing. Oh, never You're mind. You're not going to do it? <laughs> Great. Even to this day, when I was visiting my parents a month ago, um, they're very proud of me and they, you know, they love the show and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And thank you. And my mom was like, but listen, if you go back to law, you can still do it. This is my like, favorite. Uh, literally. My favorite <laughs> thing is that in 20 years, probably, yeah. you're going to be doing a, a myriad of other things. One of them won't be law. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. no, I'm positive. I might play a lawyer. <laughs> One of, yeah, 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 yeah. Might play a lawyer. Yeah. You might know about it and have yeah. to like look up facts or uh -huh. something. But you are still going to get that. I 100%. Have, uh, no, even if it's secure, like you're literally putting your hands in yeah. the star of fame. Yeah. And your mother will be like, listen, it's not altogether impossible for you to come back to law. <laughs> Wash your hands. And then, or my mom, I feel like I could win like a Golden Globe and my mom would like, but it wasn't an Oscar, right, don't so you? <laughs> maybe you should go back to law. You know, I do like it though because yeah. the one thing that I've known and shout out to Tarantulas. Okay, if, yeah. If you know, you know. That's it. If you know, you know. But the the one of the things I've clearly understood within the culture mm -hmm. is that there is like no substitute for the best. Mm -hmm. It's like a very clear understanding of like, no, that's the best one. Right. You either get the best one or you don't get the best one. Mm -hmm. And it's really a very specific thing. I see. I see, like. The comp, the no compromise aspect of it, which is because I think everything is the stakes are much higher. Yeah, it means so much more. Yeah. So 
it's funny coming from here where it's like, meh. Yeah. You know, they're like, what's he going to do? If he does anything, it'll be a miracle. Let's yeah. see what happens yeah. with Drew. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is he going to yeah. mm, make something of himself? I don't know, you know. Yeah. He seems to be just listening to records and stuff. I don't know. If he's going like, to be a DJ. My parents kind of like my dad. I knew I got some looks from my dad. He didn't say it directly, but he was like, I don't know what you're going to figure out. He's like, out. you're going to be a failure, son, yeah. and I know it. And I've already come to terms with that. <laughs> yeah. No, so, but it's, yeah. No, so, it's interesting. It's, it's Okay, so when, uh, do you, in that, do you put the, is the pressure double on you? Do you feel too? In the sense of from like. From my family? Yeah. Or because it takes succeed? so much. And I really, th- I think. Some people don't quite understand mm. that it takes so much. You, like you mm. said with the contestants, it takes so much bravery just to get up in front of people yes. and do the thing. Yes. It takes an incredible amount more bravery to go, that's my life. You know what it is, too? <sighs> it, it, here's another thing I connected with them. They were putting their hearts on the line mm-hmm. for this opportunity. It's a huge show. It's the right. first global show of this nature in Persian language. So it was so a big awesome. deal, yeah. which was, I, knock on wood, it was like amazing. Yeah. Uh, you learn something new. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was taking on a challenge of myself first. Every right. job I've booked in the last whatever of my career has been in English. Right. This is the first thing I did that's just Persian language and Farsi. Wow. And so I was nervous right. and I was scared. And Because um, you're a double agent. No, I'm down. <laughs> double agent <laughs> i'm an undercover agent um but it's true because so i would like, feel their nervousness i'm like yeah don't worry a couple of them i remember were like i just feel really nervous as a girl i'm nervous too so like we're on the same page don't worry about it okay let me ask you this yeah. and this may be a little huh, but uh when you're on when you met these other people and you met them i, I assume right away the judges the other judges yeah right? was there any uh how do i put it because i feel like it's like with certain groups of people or something like that. When you're placed with them, were they feeling like, oh, here's the American? Did they give you a little bit of the American aspect you know, of it? I or? didn't actually feel that. Oh, okay. I, and let me tell you, the judges... Just curious. Yeah, no. Anash okay. is like an international pop star and he has like... Uh, he produces music and writes for mm-hmm. other artists. Like that, He just did a song with That's DJ awesome. Marshmallow. And awesome. Mahnaz is like a beloved actress in Iran and awesome. Ebi is like our he's been working since like I don't know 40 years ago like he yeah. I grew up with his music That's awesome. they're fucking stars so then and I'm sitting here and I'm like yeah I've worked in America but nobody knows who I am in Iran other than my family so I was like oh my god what am I gonna do so I was like a bit starstruck in the beginning but they couldn't have been more like Oh hi Nazanin, yeah, good See, to meet you in person, and like ask me questions great. about myself, and it was great. Because I because sometimes that can make a job like all right now stressful. it's t- double stress yeah. because like I got to worry about like kind of like not pleasing people necessarily, but get yeah. along with you and then get along with you, and yeah. then, you know I've yeah. always felt like that. Even the crew, for that matter, I'm yeah. always like, hey, like because I don't want to be like the crew i was like this with immediately i I always you know you're the same a crew i'm just like you're my people Uh, like yeah yeah all the day all All the time i'm like good friends with a lot of them i text them every day yeah yeah it's true because i think they're those the The hardest working unsung i I mean actors are honestly the most important people in the world um (laughs) but other than them i would say crew thank you for addressing yeah i was gonna get to that question Mm -hmm. let me just sanitize my hands after i said that because that was gross so speaking of sanitizing i wanted to ask you about this yeah uh, you said so. You shot in Sweden. We shot in Sweden, yeah. And you, you, you did a little bit of like they were. They're kind of in a different approach, but they yet took you a different handle- approach. Yeah, it's <laughs> a nice way to put it. You didn't, but you got the kind of the treatment, which is like which I like. Yeah. In terms of hosting, it's like how are they doing? Like I, I said, you were kind of like the vegan on set, where it's like, well, what are they? How are they normally take it? And then they like made it possible for that to happen which i think you gotta yeah. be so i think willing to be um to adjust and to adapt in this be permeable oh yeah oh my god because for it sure. just seems like so many things got shut down for yeah. those reasons for one thing so Chris is screaming uh screaming which screamed. we can talk about that later but <laughs> um no they were the production was great because we had um you know, the hotel staff before mm-hmm. we got to the hotel knew we were co- obviously they know we're part of the production. We're the right. talent. We had our own places to sit if we wanted to go eat. Hotel okay. staff had masks on. We kept our masks on, too. Um, and then on set, everybody got tested in the morning before they were allowed okay. to work. So we had a nurse come take our rapid covid test. And awesome. um, I had a false positive one time <laughs> and I had a 20 minute panic attack um, and it was fine. It was I got two negatives in a row. So I was negative. But let me tell you the scariest part about that. Sure. Right before that, even I had a mask and Ebby, Ebby June, Ebby is the, um, he's the uh, older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
salt and pepper. Bearded. Salt and pepper, thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, he's like icon well, status. Listen, I know about it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you, you've looked. You've done your research. <laughs> we had just been talking. And his dressing room was right next to mine. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to get Ebby sick. The Iranian community is going to fucking kill me. You know what I mean? I was like, they're going to drag me through the street. Second degree murder. Yeah, it is basically second degree murder. First degree, probably. I'm never going to like work again. Yeah. So I was, and then I was like, I'm going to die in Sweden. How am I going to tell my parents? Like, oh, my God, you guys didn't take it seriously. I've been so safe in California. Um, I anyway, you... I got two negatives in a row. But they were very safe. And everyone had a mask on backstage and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's that, that's all. It's, it's really kind of all you really need. Yeah. Um, all the negative tests. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, monitoring it and being and behaving. But what I was going yeah. to ask you is like, so you came back after yeah. doing this thing. Did, did Has the city to you, like this, and we're talking about Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Has the city... You, how long have you been here or I in and out of here? Six years. Okay. So yeah. has it, has the city changed for you in that amount of time? Because we're going to get into like what it has happened recently. Too. LA? Yeah. I mean, it's changes in the sense of like, I mean, yeah, it's changed a lot. There's a lot of things that are closed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of things that should stay closed in my opinion. Like, That's what I'm saying. Do we really need One Oak? Do Did we really anyone need, need hide? It? I know. <laughs> Do we really need it? Um, no offense to anyone at One Oak, but kind of maybe. Kind I guess. of just kind where of people offense. got like gun charges. This is like the waste there of were everyone's stabbings <laughs> at One Oak before. Remember the little neon sign? It was like oh, yeah. I, I got something about what was it? I don't know. Aside from being something a about One, I spent my night at One Oak. I don't know yeah, something yeah, yeah, like yeah, ended yeah. up at One Oak. That's what it was. And it's like, but do you want to end up at One Oak anymore? <laughs> Maybe it's time to stop ending up at so One as Oak. So you woke up at One yeah. Oak, which is worse. We're about so to make some should... enemies right now. <laughs> know, <laughs> like know, all the One Oak promoters, like fuck no, that ain't oh, true. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're um, such a fucking cool place. No, but like it's changed in the sense that nightlife is gone. Nightlife but is... did we really need it? It's gone, and it's become it, well. That's the interesting thing is I feel like you know that that culture will always be there, whether they're underground or above ground, right? That's true. And we grew up in that where it was like if we wanted to, and we didn't have the little you know we weren't of age or whatever yeah we figured it out just yeah. like kids figure it out yeah that being said i kind of i kind of like it it's kind of like how i felt about weed where i'm like excuse me for talking about marijuana oh God, for marijuana. the millionth time <laughs> yeah but i kind of there was day. something special about it not being you know at the supermarket grown and stuff so like accessible that. you're saying yeah, yeah. kind of there was coming to some like i like the little like side languages and the little like shush yeah. shush about it yeah but that's weird and you shouldn't have you should that shouldn't matter to you that's my big deal yeah yeah is that like i'm i do have a fondness for cool shit like if you're gonna speak easy or whatever the problem is i feel like people are growing allowing that allowing people to especially in this city because mm -hmm. it is spread out mm -hmm. very as, spread as, out. as many people as uh, that are here so dense but very spread so out so dense yeah. and like neighborhoody more than you know it takes you at least five years to figure out what the hell is going on i barely know where i'm going still <laughs> so it's fine i look at maps i'm like am i close to you i'm on your way right you want to pick me up or well i just spent a day in culver or wherever and we landed in some like a body of water and i was like what is it this could, this could be i told the friend i was riding my bike with i was like this could be the caspian sea and i wouldn't know <laughs> would caspian's near iran though so it was silly you know we're not Respect, near the caspian, you know i thought yeah. i'd throw that out there <laughs> shout out you know He's trying to miss, yeah He's the caspian pandering. we He's know pandering. the caveat yeah um <laughs> But my, my it's changed. It's, it's changed. changed. The right? landscape's changed. The way we interact has changed. Restaurants have changed. You know, LA is a tourist city. Reg yeah, you know, regardless. It really of is. And I live in Hollywood. Right. And I've noticed, like, you know, there's like nobody mm -mm. in in Hollywood Boulevard. I will say, the last few weeks, I have noticed there is more foot traffic. Yeah. People with masks. There takes their the tourism is starting again. It's slow to roll though. It's just everything's. Uh, it's different. It's different. It's now. like everybody. Everybody's doing this thing at their door. Like. Eh. Yeah. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Should we? Nobody really knows you, for sure. You know what I wish we would have done from Don't the me. well, a lot of things we could have done different. <laughs> but let's just say I just wish everybody could have accepted from day one. Listen, guys, it's uh, going to be different for like a couple of years. Let's just accept that and then get to the couple of years because I feel like what happened was everybody could be like, we can't do this, but let's try to do this, and it right. would make things worse. Okay, but let's try to do this, but not do that. And it was like we're going to open this, we're going to close that, yeah. we're going to open this at ten percent capacity, but we're going to close this, and none of it made a lot of sense. It felt right. very arbitrary. Right. And so I feel like, um, and this is <laughs> so a ter true. terrible city to be arbitrary in because half the city is just, <sighs> I mean. They're living in a, a, living in a, a city of their own. Alternate universe. <laughs> like, 
Remember the mansion parties that got busted? And then oh, somehow yeah. there was like just like uh, machine guns and firearms found at these machines. I was like, there's always what arms. What is happening? Oh, why are we dealing arms again, everyone? Stop dealing what? arms. If I'm at a mansion party in Bel Air, the last thing I expect to, uh, I for know. there to be is like machine guns. I know, I know. Cut to you being like, Drew, I never thought I just selling yeah. bazookas. It's so weird. I'm going to buy one. <laughs> it's a COVID special. It's cool. So weird. Um, I, okay, so the city's changed. I definitely see it. The landscape, yeah. obviously, with what's going on with all the retail. Yeah. I think the thing is, without the retail there, it, it was distraction. Like, even the billboards are slowly sort of blank yeah so you're driving by what i feel like is an unfinished town in a lot of ways we're oh like, that's interesting way to look at it yeah we're yeah. like on our own movie set right now <laughs> yeah, in LA. Where we're like we're nobody like, showed happen? up there's the fires there's wind it feels earthquakes. like a town right now that is one of those ma- made out of plywood where you'd open the door and it wouldn't be it would just end at a brick wall and yeah. you'd be like that makes sense yeah no we that are literally sense. living in a literal movie set right now yeah it's like a truman show it is a Truman yeah, Show. We don't know so what the fuck is going on. Here. Yeah. Nobody knows what's going on with the vaccine. But the weather is super consistent. It's the so weather funny. is pretty it good. It feels like we're in a giant soundstage. It, I'm telling <laughs> you, we are on a set and we if just don't know. If anybody knows it. what we're talking about, yeah. it's absolutely true because Do the, you know what it's we're talking consistently about? perfect weather. Yeah. With no shift regard there were winds the other day and people were like i don't know what i'm gonna do batting down the hatches get some tape oh my on the god there's a sprinkle yeah. out there i don't know how i'm gonna drive and they do and they'll crash yeah. there's like always you know it's like a fucking light drizzle everybody crashes their little fucking la let me tell you guys man, los guys. angeles you guys are the worst freaks you're the worst the fuck out and i'm talking to you tesla threes yeah i'm talking to model threes only now precipitation guys, fucks sus. everybody up in yeah. this city and it's funny because I'm from the East Coast, mm. so I'm used to like blizzards. Mm. We drive in blizzards and we're good. And these people are like, oh my God, Without it's wipers. rain. Like people would be like, oh, the wipers ain't working. Keep it yeah. moving. You yeah. know what I mean? You'd be like, what? Yeah. So that being said, uh huh. I know that's very true. I know that also people like out here, if I feel like this is a town of people that get into their cars to do this, the, mo- the most simplest task. Yeah. So they easily could walk over. Nobody to, walks. They don't want to do it because also now there's this like, especially in this little lovely mm-hmm. section of town, there's also like an odd confrontation that might happen yeah. on your way there. There is uh, living in Hollywood. I will say that that <laughs> yes. is absolutely today. Yeah. As a matter of fact, this happens all the time. And my friend came over and I was like, don't worry. This happens every day. Yeah. There's always one person at my intersection and I won't say what intersection is, but always one person at my intersection screaming at the top of their lungs about nonsense. And I looked out my balcony today and I was like, dude, could you just maybe like, and then I saw an LAPD pull up oh, and then wow. I was like, oh shit. Cause the guy was wearing a trench coat and I was oh, like, this no. could not end well. And I was like, do I need to like yeah. film this? And then the guy put his hands up and then L- it's like, even the LAPD is it's over like, this shit. Uh, they just took, he was in the middle of a busy intersection. Yelling, yeah. Cars are stopping, honking. He's like causing mayhem. And then the cops put the megaphone on. They go, can you just move out of the street, please? And the guy was like, no, I'm not moving. And then the, the cop literally goes, get out of the street. Yeah. And he did. And then they drove off. And I was like, well, that's good. That's what should have happened. But also, thanks for just saying that. Thanks for saying that. But then we're our mental health experts. I'm that's worried. I'm worried. Different and I, topic. Yeah. It's like the yeah. infrastructure of that. I'm, I'm we're, we're, we'll give it. You know, we're letting Biden breathe, as they say. Let we're him letting breathe. the old bag of we bones breathe. We opened up the cork breathe. and uh, decanting him, yeah, if you will. Exactly. It's a wine <laughs> Blow term. Blow the dust off that bad boy and get it to work. But I do think the mood overall has shifted kind of in a positive light because of the How sort so? of... I'll tell you why. Yeah, tell me. There isn't constant news coverage of somebody saying utterly insane yes. things Thank God. over and over and over again. Yeah. So the it feels like there's dead air. Yeah, it feels there's all this shit going on. I we agree. landed on the fucking Mars. You saw that on the Mars. On the Mars. <laughs> we landed on the Mars. Yeah, guys, I'm worried because I am what they call solo linguistic. We landed on the Mars. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Time for Marks. Uh huh. So, which I think is really compelling. It's also what the what that research is going to do is going to either prove the existence of life on that planet for sure or which is a sick thing we have life i can't wait till we can just get past the fact that we know aliens exist they're definitely there so so yeah. so that being said yeah uh we, we still have news but because we don't have a berating lunatic mm-hmm. it does feel like huh, nothing's going on i keep seeing the most interesting 
uh, I'm just going to take it here because I always do. Take but I've it. been seeing, and if you live in Los Angeles for a short amount of time, you see car chases, and they're really miraculous. They <laughs> last so incredibly long, and they end Why so oddly. Yeah. And the last one, and this is the thing that I got to eat my words, uh-huh. Johnny eat my words, is that normally it's a guy. Mm-hmm. I have to say, uh, it's always a guy. Always a male. And he always guns it or runs it or whatever. And or he goes five time, miles an hour. It was two females. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So oh, wow. I got to give I got to give some credit because you're given the stats a chance. What were they running from? Uh, a stolen vehicle. They, they went on a high speed pursuit in yeah. a stolen vehicle. Not Amazing. A, not, Love that not journey. Not your best L.A. move. No. Although, like, if if you were to say, ah, I got to L.A. and bam, I, I got into a high speed pursuit, I'd be like. It's not the craziest story I've heard. It's happened, actually. I, mine was last week, so, so <coughs> yeah. We know that the the actual, like, streets and the, like, the look of this town is shifting. <coughs> we know that, like, everybody's kind of peering out to make sure it's cool because nobody quite knows if it's cool to be out. And because nobody, and this is what I was going to get to, wouldn't it have been just easier if somebody was like, and I'm not talking about Fauci, but just some representative. Uh-huh. And this is going to be our representative for what the deal is. Okay. And he would come out and just be like, here's the deal, guys. We don't know about this until this scientist figures it out. We're going to do A, B, C, and D. We're not going to create tents in, yeah. outside in the street because yeah. a tent is a closed structure. Yeah. It makes no sense. For these restaurants. Are oh, you telling the restaurants? Oh, my <laughs> God. Mamma mia. First of all, and you had a negative COVID test two days ago, you told did, me. Okay, yeah. So this cough shouldn't bother me. Um, no, no, no. That's purely on the CBD level. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> Rip a fat bomb. <laughs> um, right before I got here. I did. Um, no, so... Yeah, I look, I've seen these tents and they're completely closed off. I was like, and so you're basically indoors. So this is not compliant. Do, do you feel like that is just somebody being like, because uh, I, I understand it's chilly at night. And it's I, and, chilly at night. But it is, it is the place, if you're going to have a patio. Right. It's L.A. was the patio king. But just have the patio then. This just have gr- the patio. this like parking lot nonsense that I've seen. I haven't gone to a parking lot. I will say. I'm not trusting your design gone. values either. I don't either. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I don't. I'm just, seeing like weird trusslas. What are they called? The yeah. Anyway. Trusslas. <laughs> I think you compared. You just combined trussle on the Mars and with Tesla trusslas. on the Mars. We have but trussles. Like, tr- truffles. Truffles. Or they have like, truffles. They're, they're like. I know what you're talking about. Oh, they're like pieces of yes. Fencing just MacGyvered wood. together with like fake tree like, on it. This could fall on my head. <coughs> yeah, is it worth it's just uh, yeah, the that's gnocchi? What it is. That's what it is. Should I just buy the gnocchi and <laughs> get delivery? No, it's it's weird because and I also understand from a small. Here's the other thing. Mm. These big chains were allowed to stay open yeah. and these small businesses are suffering. So it's like we get it. We get it. Like you guys want to stay open and you want to be compliant. It, to me, it does never made sense that I could go shopping at Century City. Oh, I agree. But I couldn't go eat at Century City. No, we feel. What's the difference? I feel like it's been wildly botched, right? And I get, I get it. Like, oh, they say, okay, when you eat, you take your mask off. But the tables are spaced mm-hmm. out. The servers are wearing masks and shields. Yeah. Why can't I go? And I'm not saying like I'm saying, oh, I want to go to a restaurant. I'm just saying as far as small business and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not budget. Um, uh, gro- capital? No. Oh. What's the word I'm looking for? I'm I can't because I drank too much yeah, tequila. Yeah, it's the marks. Anyway, uh, the GDP. Domestic gross domestic product. Oh, oh. Are we talking about that? I don't California, know, but I feel like I just flunked a quiz. <laughs> no, because California has one of the highest uh, grossing economies in the world, not just that. America, the world. And we shut so much shit down. And it's like you made all these small restaurants and businesses close, but yeah. you allowed like chain things to remain open. That's you're catering to big corporations and that's not cool okay so if you're gonna let walmart and target stay open let you know joe's italian restaurant on the corner stay open yeah, somehow that, too that would made no sense help them me. be compliant help them or help like, me help you <laughs> it was a thing where you did see the survival of the fittest in the sense that like some places were super smart to pop a to-go window in real fast real quick i saw sons of bitches where i'm like you're not gonna mate and then came back and i was mm-hmm. like you got a to-go then window we will deliver within 20 you, miles you can yeah. make a shit burger and yeah. still survive yeah because you just put in that to-go window yeah and i feel like those are the, the critical mistakes thank god i don't have to make them with a the small business yeah uh my heart goes out to a lot of small businesses right now but yeah i do feel like you know we'll it's get, not fair we'll bounce back and get on our feet are there any we will. i do have this question for yeah. you are yeah. there any side effects of this time period the last say whatever 13 months yeah that you feel are positive like for instance Mm. i feel like one of the positives is i was a personal space fanatic i really like personal space yeah 
Like in line, you're like, why are you staying so close to me? In line, and yeah. I'm not even, I can't, and this I'm going to say, I'm not a lady. That's already, the space issue is already broken all the time. Yeah. So for me, it was like, oh, I couldn't imagine. Ugh, that's already awful. But I, I really feel like that's been one of the blessings of this time period. It's like, yeah. oh, cool. You're staying your distance away from me. For me, I feel like. A, it made me slow down. A, it made me do all of my daily gratitudes even uh, more. So, like I now, I do it every single day throughout the day. And just because I know that no matter what I've struggled with throughout the pandemic, yeah. I have had had it way better, thank God, than a lot of people. So I remember to s- verbalize those things out loud. So I remind myself of how good I have it. I am thankful for my family. Um, I realize even more the importance of like the circle that you keep around you, how they feed your energy and your soul yeah. and the people that maybe were sucking that energy out of you fell to the wayside during this time. Because there's no time for there's it. There's no time. We all are on borrowed time. So it's like make the most out of, and we've heard it, you know, when you grow up and you're like, they're like, you never know if you're going to get tomorrow. And you're like, I mean, that's so cliche. And you're yeah, like, you're like 12th but. grade seems like an eternity from yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. But it's cliche for a reason. Yeah. And I think the fact that like, we do need to take a look at how we treat each other. Everybody that you meet, mm-hmm. everybody is going, You nowadays, we're going to run into someone who probably lost someone from COVID. Right. Someone who went bankrupt for like two, three months and couldn't feed their kids. Someone right. who, you know, all these things. And it's like, just be nicer to people. Like, please be kind. Just please, you never know what That is what such the true statement. Happening. Oh my God. Well, one, that was very beautiful. Oh, Second of all, it's absolutely true. Third, yeah. it's really hard to keep in mind. I do feel like I'm sharing a bit of that gratefulness, uh, all joking aside, yeah. because I do feel very strongly that I was in a position, even though I maybe overdid it on the lockdown tip, where yeah. I was like, I ain't seeing nobody, yeah, Jack. Yeah. I turned into Nobody like, get near me. Yeah, I was like a hobbit character yeah. for about two months there. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. looking good. Because we didn't know. We had no information. We're like, are we going to die? Is this on a pizza box? Like, can I wash the pizza box? Like, you know I what almost mean? went straight loco. Yeah. Like, and so, and I'm glad because like a lot of people have talked to me. Man, it's so great that like we even, like part of that is we, uh, we live in a time where you can say things about mental health now that don't make you seem like a lunatic. It was so taboo and I never understood. You know what else too? I I had good friends that studied psychology, psychiatry, psychoanalysis. So it's like, I grew up like this is normal that you talk about your feelings, you share, you go to therapy, you get through things. We're all of a collective trauma. Like I'm a, I react here. The other thing that you learn is the way that people are reacting to you is always most certainly 90% of it or maybe more is a result of what they've been through and their own insecurities and their own right. shortcomings and we all have it. Right. So if you learn to actually take, I have learned even more so in the last year to take things way less personally. Right. You know what I mean? Someone doesn't call you back. Someone doesn't want to hang out. Someone's oh, like, all yeah. right, well, I'll see you when I see you, buddy. You must be going through and I'm here if you need right. me or, you know what I'm just saying? You know what I, mean? I think about like, all sorts of scenarios, right? Yeah. Because I, I do, I, I'm 100% in the same boat. I do have that same mentality. I do think I suffer some swings occasionally uh, when they go into like, I'll I'll definitely seem moodier than, you know, or being like, today's crap, man. This has got to end. I'll do, I'll be overly dramatic. I'll use the fucking whole deal. Can I tell you one reason that I actually really liked you when we became friends um, that I felt cool with you was we immediately kind of formed a kinship, like joking around. Right. And I noticed in you right away, you can go up and down. But yeah. the difference is there's other people that might take that personally that I've seen around you that be like, oh, my God, Drew doesn't like me or Drew's right, me. And I'd be right, like, or right. you could just understand Drew's probably just going through his own shit today. Right. Leave him alone until he comes around. It's weird but how some like people that. won't let you do that, though. Yeah. I feel like I trap myself myself. I feel mm-hmm. like I, I am being self-critical here because I do. I would probably say it was other people for a while. But now I know that it was like my expectations of myself around other people. And now I'm like, hmm. I've lowered them. You're be your, just, just yeah. Be yourself. It's just like yeah. it's exhausting too. Yeah. And and to have somebody be like, eh, it's like you should be. Here's the thing. Okay. We we live in a world. I think that where there's a lot of positive jargon, mm-hmm. but a lot of it is really valid and true. And I think the, the the thing about gratefulness is that it's it's just like a lot of things in life that are contagious. Yeah. They kind of spawn on themselves. Yeah. And it's like just in the same way that in the exact reverse. If you wake up every day like this is fucked, 
buddy, it's gonna be fucked all day, every, so every day. So I don't know <laughs> what the best case scenario it is. If you gotta, you gotta find a little bit of about. Uh, I know this. I was thinking about this the other day, and this is kind of. Uh, but there are people that can't stand to be alone. Yeah. I feel for those people yes. because they probably went through a bunch of weird shit. Yeah. Trying to, and I know that like a lot of people, people got the dogs and people adopted the things, you know, to try to like deal with those things. Fill the void. None of them are wrong. Mm -hmm. None of them are wrong. Mm -hmm. But I do, I can think of half a dozen people in my life that cannot, they're like, impo they have to be taught. I have to have somebody around me at all times. And so for those people, I know that it was probably a challenging time. It's hard. I like love, <laughs> I am very social. I'm very mm -hmm. outgoing. I love being around people and talking, but I also very much enjoy being by myself at home and cooking and watching my Real Housewives and dancing around with nobody to music and right. singing at the top of my lungs. And it's, it's pretty totally great. fine. It's, it's great. It's pretty great. Yeah. So I and think giving, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say just everybody's different and we all need some sort of connection. I think what this year has also shown yeah. is we're more uh, cautious about who we're connecting with. For sure. And when we're connecting with them. I think we're, them. we're about, we, we, I felt like this for a while. I felt like people were not necessarily naive, but I was, I was often sort of like, how is this still a scam kind mm -hmm. of person where I was like, Please explain. Okay. What do you mean? Like, I felt like, people were still getting caught up in a lot of like Nigerian, like strange emails and stuff like that. And I feel like, <laughs> sorry, please send me money <laughs> or my family will or be killed. I'm a king. Yeah. First and foremost, I'm going to start out with, I'm a king. So our economy has collapsed oh, and you the are email. the savior. Uh, yeah. so your highness. My email. Speaking yeah. of which, what? So forgive me. And I don't know if you f are following, uh, the, the, the non-royal royal couple now. Prince Harry. Meghan Markle. Yeah. They're in California. Yeah, I know. Right? They, Where are I they? I think they're starting a podcast too. Oh my God. Aren't you, you right? They'll have us as a guest. <laughs> if you guys need a guest, print, former Prince We're, Harry and yeah. Meghan Duchess. Duchess? But we got to vibe Meghan first because I'm not 100% sure I want to commit Maybe we won't to vibe it. with them. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey, we just learned this I am dying for this uh, mm -hmm. secretly on the low. Yeah. I'm dying to find out what this podcast is about. I wonder. Because I just saw the promo and I don't know how you feel about this. There's Let a me promo. Ask you okay. A per, uh, this particular thing. I wanted yeah. to bring this up earlier. But yeah. there's this podcast promo I saw on the pa the homepage because I got to pay attention because of this thing. You got to do it. I got to pay attention to it because it's a thing I have. It's a competition. Yeah. So I'm glad you understand mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. But um, I saw the boss who just got busted for a DUI, the Bruce Springsteen and Obama have their own podcast yeah. called Renegades, oh, born in the USA. Okay. What are your thoughts? Do who, you want to listen to this? Whose podcast is that? It's Obama's podcast with Barack, President o Barack Obama, or former first lady. <laughs> well, I still call him President Barack. Obama. No, a lot of people do. And, Same and, here. And Flotus. I'm still like Biden's the vice, huh? Yeah. So Biden's vice president and, <laughs> and Kamala's was, president, right? Kam yeah, Kamala is. Don't the trick president. me twice. Uh, <laughs> fool me yeah. once, shame on you. <laughs> um, but I would listen. Of course, I would of course, listen right? to President Obama's. Part podcast. of the reason was I'd listen to Obama narrate like Huck Finn. And you're like, okay. His voice, yeah. like all that stuff that he does, like there's a, he's been training with that voice to find, here's, hear me out. As a politician, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, to that point. Go on. President Obama could literally read me the ingredients on my shampoo bottle. That's what and I'm I'd be like, wow, dihoxychlorotride. That's oh what I'm God. saying. God, like nobody could say it like that. You know and what I mean? I can't say the same for the boss. Because have no. you ever heard the boss talk? No disrespect to no the, one of the disrespect. greatest living American songwriters of all time. Born in the USA, glory the days. USA. He's he's kind of Americana, a bygone Americana, if you will. Uh, wearing the fucking flag in his back pocket mm -hmm. and some tight jeans in the mm -hmm. 80s or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the boss sounds... He kind of likes to like this. Yeah, sure. you don't want to hear that narrative. It's kind of like... I don't want to hear like Clint Eastwood with a bunch of marbles in his mouth. Yeah, we're on. But I have never actually listened in, to what the boss's whole vibe is about and maybe he's a kook maybe he's like maybe he needed this outlet for you to find out new side of bruce springsteen i'm sorry are you saying that <laughs> bruce springsteen and barack obama are doing a podcast together together oh yeah that's Renegades, interesting born in the usa i would listen to it just and to see it's what a it's black about. and white photo yeah. and you got obama and he's sitting there legs crossed can i look like, at oh my phone's over there Never you mind. could totally look it up yeah, go okay. look it up we're riffing okay, but go for it yeah, yeah go get your phone and look Let's it up see what this is about but I'll, I'll finish by explaining what so far i understand from it and i know that it might be just a promo or something like that but this is how fucking crazy the world is where 
I got news of the ex Royals Royals getting their own pod and being like, we gotta start a pod. I'm sorry. Are we going to start a podcast? Well, we're going to start a podcast, <laughs> my love. Yeah, me, we'll you, the and Archie. For them if they're not interesting. What do you say? We're gonna like it, or, we're gonna you know do a little podcast about life after quarantine and you know tequila yeah, yeah, and margaritas, yeah. spicy margaritas, hand sanitizer. Oh yeah, and little bit things like that. Get and the then geezers when, together. <laughs> get the geezers together and the Renegade podcast with pre- former so president. Like, what is it? Oh yeah, Renegade Bruce, podcast. Bruce Springsteen. Um, oh, Barack Obama you. and Bruce Springsteen podcast Renegades coming to Spotify. Well, wouldn't you know? And wouldn't you leave it to Spotify because Spotify is slowly, quietly Taking creating over the world. a media company yeah. that is going to dominate the stratosphere. Because think about mm-hmm. this. And this everything. Just, well, they're just the, they did something I didn't think was like such a savvy business move, which is we have this entire subscription of people, right? Just listening to tunes. They're listening to the fucking Beatles or whatever. Mm-hmm. How about we just introduce media to that enormous subscribership yeah. that's already built in? We yeah. don't need to convince them to fucking Disney Plus for fourteen yeah. ninety. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it makes the, it's such a clever side hustle, like a sweet side move of being like, oh, we're just gonna take this gigantic billion subscribership and go, hey, by the way, we have like cool shit. Like there's a sitcom. It's probably with Jennifer Aniston. Or yeah, somebody. Yeah, I've heard but of her. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. like my biggest gripe is with Apple TV because they're so blatantly like we paid ten people. We paid ten huge people. Yeah, it's like Spielberg. Boo, boo, boo. I've already complained and about this. This way is too the much. network. Yeah. I'm never gonna get hired by uh-huh. Apple TV. No, you might. But <laughs> no, you might. Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, I just f- I find it super funny that like these that they're trying to do that and they're trying to grab these subscribers and it's just a sort of subscriber battle mm-hmm. that used to be the cable Nielsen or Nies- Nielsen ratings. Yes. Yeah. And that used to be that was the old way of trying to compete and all this stuff. And now, now it's like, it's a it's a kind of kind of backdoor move. You know what I mean? Yeah. But 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 that being said, I'm fucking interested to see a who puts their foot in their mouth. Mm-hmm. Right? What if Obama one day just stubs his toe on the podcast and is like, "Son of a mother!" and he, and he goes off. Yeah. Right? I'll smack the wig off that. Yeah. Bit. And. Like, We're just like, oh my god! Did you hear what fucking? Yeah, did you hear what Barack said? <laughs> so you know, I think this one crazy. fucking time, me and Joe were. Uh, if in he Syria. had a fall from grace, nothing is real. I don't think if you could pick any celebrity duo to have a podcast, who would it be? That I would be with them. No, or no, just, just two, oh, two like, people that I think should yeah, do something together. Barack Obama and Bruce Springsteen. Okay, so didn't we already see that coming. Did not see that coming. I had to Google it to even know that it was a thing. Okay, yeah. and you're like the Bruce. Two like, celebrities. You could have picked Snoop. Like Barack, oh. no offense, but you could have picked Snoop. Okay, what if it was like? And he's established in the podcast game. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or Mike Epps, maybe. Okay, hold on. Let Go me. Ahead. I need a minute to think about this. No, take your time. I just do feel they like... have to be alive. No, but oh, like. Oh, okay. So Tupac. <laughs> okay, that would be fresh. Tupac's one, and then who? Would That's I put so him? good because he was already very political and already. So great. I felt like he every press interview that he had is mm-hmm. now prolific. Like every time you see a clip, you're like, oh my god, he's genius. I mean, to me, he was, first of all, he's the goat, but to me, <laughs> Tupac is so much more than a rapper. He was a poet. He was a lyricist. He was an artist. Yeah. He was a political activist. Actor, um, yeah. Way before, I think it was like 23, 25 something yeah. when he died. I can't remember now because I'm drunk. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he was, I would love to hear a podcast with him because you know he would touch on everything. Mm-hmm. Um so I Tupac guess if he, and, had, God, I think it would person? be Biggie because if he had a, you think so? I think they would have a tremendous podcast. I think they would at this they stage w- in the game, both really of them would be fun old. To, mm-hmm. They'd look all salt and pepper like DMX, where he's and like, they'd say DMX looks tired. Like I saw a video of he like, he looks upset. I saw of one of the new Jack rappers, and you know they're all on Xanax and they live forever and shit, and they're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like fucking <laughs> out of their minds and their neon colored eyes and their hair. And yeah, yeah, they're just amazing. like, I'm on everything. Okay, <laughs> and um. He the, he caught DMX at like a local spot, like hanging out, getting food. Yeah. And DMX is just so caught off guard because this dude's throwing him on his IG or whatever. And DMX is just like, man, yeah, man, whatever. Like DMX just looks like a dog who's kind of just like slowed down over the years. Yeah, he's just like, yeah, yeah. whatever the fuck. Because yeah. he's seen everything. He, he really has. So he's no, gone it, full throttle. And it, now he's reduced to neutral. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in neutral. <laughs> DMX I would definitely, is definitely riding in neutral. Well, you know, Jack, our friend Jack Pearson did a film with him. That's Remember? amazing. We need to watch that. We also Shout need out to get Jack, Jack on. Yeah, Jack Shout needs out. to come on and tell his, his yeah. interesting DMX stories. Yeah. That being said, I agree. I feel like it, it, it totally would, at this point, Tupac and Video would have uh, 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 squashed the beef. 
united sure. both coasts. Because they would have understood, hey, we're not going to play into this. Because they we all know, first of all, this was record labels just trying to make more money. Media. Media trying to make more money. That's 100%. all it was. They even admitted it themselves in 100%. so many words. And so, yeah, seeing them on a podcast would be cool. I feel like, but let's do one where it's like okay. two women too. Who would the yeah. women be? Um, okay, well, Fran Lebowitz, I just saw that documentary with her and I was like... She's pretty she's, funny. She's fucking amazing. But, like, let's, but if it was her and like Miley Cyrus... I would listen to a podcast with Miley Cyrus. I love Miley I would Cyrus. Subs- I dare I say I Britney would subscribe. Spears. Oh, yeah. Britney Spears sure. and Miley Cyrus. And then, hold on. And then oh. maybe let's do female rappers. So, like, Cardi Ooh. B. Okay. And you know what, Lil' Kim? Let's go OG. <gasps> I would love be to new see her out about with the great lighting. Yeah. I, would, I need great lighting on Lil' Kim. I refuse to not have it. I don't care what Cardi B, bring your own team. Yeah. But I need Lil soft, Kim? easy mm-hmm. lighting on mm-hmm. Little Kim from now on. If that's just how I'm going to roll. Little Kim's pretty OG, so you know what I'm saying? I, I just, Lil Kim and Cardi I B could want, be a thing. And, and uh, I just feel like that would be great. I'd love to hear... Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Sorry, I'd love well. to see Lauren Hill too. I have a feeling, if you want my... Oh, in my humble, uh-huh. Lauren Hill's would come... I feel like... A lot of problems. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Just okay? say it. I feel like... Lauren Hill has come to a great awakening. Okay. This is a very gifted, talented person that I found. Miss Education of Lauren Hill, I can still listen to it. It's a every fucking track. classic. Even I, I go full full back, like let's reel it back mm-hmm. a little bit to the Fugees because I felt like that's where everybody just la, clicked. La, la. So there was a moment where you saw fame and all of these things because i feel like it hits you like a freight train you mm-hmm. know you get a platinum album or whatever everybody's losing their fucking minds you're yeah. like i you know you wake up and you go shut up and everybody's like that's amazing yeah. it's like that yeah. went gold or yeah. whatever yeah so i can know i know that that can be frustrating certain people handle it this way certain people run away they go to jamaica or whatever but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i do feel like ever since when she's ever like she's been i think traumatized a little bit by it to where she doesn't trust it at all people like most I don't blame death, her. like I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but like there yeah. are certain there's certain personalities that are like I'm not buying what you're selling, but I'm here. Yeah, and oh, you're like, yeah, whoa, yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. checked out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah know, I'm not buying know. what you're selling, but I'm here. Definitely, exactly. most stuff is that. Definitely, Lauren Hill is that. Yeah. Um, it's a bold stance, but it works flawlessly, and it takes a courageous human being because you want so bad. It sounds so crazy, but when you're put into a situation like this where there's a bunch of people asking you weird questions and yeah. they kind of think you think that they like you mm-hmm. that's the delusional person yeah they're just trying to catch you they're just trying to nab you so they're just like hey come on mm-hmm. and it's so it's like to me if what it feels directly like at least in my personal opinion is when um a baby's being played with by someone who doesn't know it mm-hmm. and is like get in here and they're squeezing you and you're just and like what like, are you stop. doing that's yeah. what the press feels like to me yeah. or at least yeah. you know when you're doing like the car whatever it is yeah so i've always been like Oof, this is you know rough yeah. and also i fucking do the stupidest thing every time i'll smoke a little doobie or something yeah go in there extra scared uh-huh you know what i mean yeah. go in there extra scared talk Give to yourself these anxiety. talk to the serpents extra scared yeah Drew. that's smart make them be monsters that's cool so okay so you you said you were watching the uh television and and like just mind numbing stuff because i noticed recently and, and i'm gonna ask you a question i swear the people are sort of like leaning away from like very serious dramas and stuff. I've noticed this today because I keep asking people like, oh, have you seen this? Oh, go ahead. No, uh, go. I was uh, saying yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, it's funny because like I'm asking people like I'll, I, I watch stuff because people are like, this is crazy. You got to watch. Dude, it's crazy. And I'll be like, that used to. Yeah. People want to escape now, <laughs> man. Nobody wants to. There was a question they did because so I watched true. I watched The View pretty religiously. Yeah. Sorry. I watched The no, View pretty religiously. Good. And um. Whoopi the other day asked like would you guys want to see shows where they address the pandemic and I was like no yeah I fucking don't I lived it's it like I watching a see sitcom it. where yeah. they have the mask on the sitcom you're like yeah I don't know just, if I'm ready yet no for you I to do that no I think we should it's and I bet the writers had a t- right now I bet the writers had a tough time mm-hmm. because you have to ask yourself that question and they were put in that unique position of How do we identify are we doing yeah, yeah are we identifying the times or are we allowing people to escape and yeah I found so many people were escaping into older sitcoms mm-hmm. and like other eras of TV. Yeah. Even re going back and watching Breaking Bad or The Sopranos or something like that where they're like, I want this version of, of the world we're around. Yeah. And it's very interesting because it. we have a lot like ever since like, you know, we've sort of put, our, uh, we're distrusting of a lot of things. And yeah. You can see that paranoia with the shows like Black Mirror and all that stuff. But I say people are really like, okay, 
but I don't know if I want a season three. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. Like, I I, I think in even in the beginning of the pandemic, like I was wa- I watched Ozark, which is yeah. like the most stressful, anxiety inducing show, but it was so good. And I watched a lot of stuff like that. And then I I told myself I was like Nazani, you really need to stop because like your heart rate is already up because of the <laughs> pandemic. Like you need to add to it. So I, st- I watched some things. I still watch serious things, but like at this point, especially the last few months, I'm like, I want to, sorry. Okay. I'm a, a big real housewives fan. Mm. Dallas is the only one I will never watch. Cause I'm like, I don't connect to these ladies at all, but all so the you franchises, go back. I do the, I do the escapism thing. And then like when I yeah. watch shows and movies, I don't need them to address the pandemic. There's actually a show right now that I watch. Um, I think it's on ABC. It's called big sky. Ryan Phillippe was in it. Um, Is it like a thriller? Yeah, it's like a it's a drama. All I remember was a trailer where they were like, "Yeah, and that's where he keeps the girls yeah. or whatever." And you're yes. like, "What?" I know oh, it's because okay. they kidnap <laughs> girls in it, and okay. they're on the hunt to find who's doing this kidnapping. All right, and so, I won't ruin the show for you because it my, was taunting, and they always have that guy who always plays every serial killer a bad dude. Yes. Oh my god. And that they're dude, great. And, and they're scary. Crushes. They nail it. It's kind all of the time. like Jesse. Plinkett or whatever his name is. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, it, he everybody was same. talking about he's doing a Scorsese movie. I'm like, yeah, the it's guy the murders psycho. it he's every se- Literally murders people and the I'm, scene and I'm everything down. Put I know exactly Jesse what you're talking about. Plinkett yeah. kid in there whatever yeah, yeah. fucking name. I'm yeah, butchering yeah. everybody. I know name. who you're talking okay, about. Good. Um, but like they did a thing where, for example, they'd be at the police station and they had a sanitizer on the desk. Uh. That was their nod to this is COVID times. No one's wearing a mask. No one's talking about it. I can deal with that. That's fine. Uh, but with the thing where they're like talking about, I don't know for me personally, I'm just like, I just feel like we are bombarded with it every day and we yeah. should, of course you, you're aware of what's going on and you're cautious and you live your life safely. But like, then when I watch something, I'd rather like not have to face it again. I think too. a lot of people feel the way that you feel yeah. right now where it's like, well, I think this goes back to where, like, you know, if your daily is kind of already apocalyptic and, and stressful yeah. and, like, you don't know what's around the corner. You don't want to see it corner, on screen. Yeah. Right. You kind of, like, want to lean away. And I can imagine that a bunch of program is probably in the works right now where it's like, hey, She's just dazzle them with lights, a yeah. couple of costumes, yeah. a musical number, but have everybody on green screen 10 yeah. feet away. Yeah. And you know what? No I worries. would fucking hate it. It's not something necessarily like for me, I can't go fully like Japanese TV where it's just a bunch of lights and colors and somebody screaming at the screen. Mm-hmm. I'm not there yet. I'm mm-hmm. close. Mm-hmm. Because some <laughs> almost I, there. I am like the baby with the keys because like yeah. I am to some extent. I do need to be like muted in a lot of ways too, where it's like, I do feel like I'm in the same way. Sometimes I like those procedural uh, cooking shows. Cause like, you know, okay. Either you cook the thing really good or you didn't. Yeah. Nobody's going to die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Either you cook the cake or, you or baked it. Shit. That you goes to show how much your I'm souffle fell in right. the oven. Like <laughs> that's the most drama I want to see right now. In television. Sometimes they can lead up to it. My only beef with shows like that. And mm-hmm. this is my one criticism. Okay. And I have only, you know, usually one about everything. But everything. The, the pause in which somebody is waiting to reveal the this is a specifically in a programming note to, to the producers of all these shows. It doesn't mean you don't have to do it every time. Just just mix it up every once in a while. What I'm saying is right when it comes down to like, and will she get the award? And they're going, durr, durr. they hit her with the three camera angles. Durr, durr. Side they by cut side. back to the judge. Durr, mm-hmm. durr, mm-hmm. Durr. And then they go to a fucking commercial. And I'm like, Dirge? I can't. And then I'm, you're, I'm angry. I can't oh. say anything about that because I'm on Persia's Got Talent where they but, definitely employ those rules. But it's different. <laughs> it, it, it's different when there are actual buildups when you're not doing it and there's no buildup. It's a stressful moment for me because I'm like, well, I, we know. Yeah. Kind of saw in the, tra- like, I know what's going to, why are you using that moment? That moment's reserved for this, yeah. you know? Yeah. And which, it, in which case, especially for results of any caliber. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, it's, it's a cooking show, man. It's like, be cooler. Okay, so he doesn't like cooking shows <laughs> is what we're getting to. I'm just saying like... You don't like the Great British Bake Off is what you're saying. <sighs> I do. My it sister puts, likes that It show. puts me right to bed though. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, and I have to it say... It makes me want to eat. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that looks so good. Where can I get a cake like that? Damn it. Is I anywhere open? I'm getting swindled by Postmates because I leave the notifications on. They're just like, hey... This is now available. Hey. You can get a chocolate sundae hey. in under five minutes. Just remember okay. these four letters in all caps. You're going you're gonna to forget it. Here's your code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. uh, we, we can agree that people want lighter entertainment. Lighter w- entertainment. What sure. would be 
like what do you think it is do you think it's some real like because i definitely think like you could handle we could, the, the, the people could handle like a drama right now yeah. this is us type shit sure but if it it's period i think the key if <gasps> i were bridgerton yeah that's what i'm saying i think the reason that's so big so big is because i think the key to it and if i was some evil executive yeah. <laughs> across the way over here yeah. i would be going period piece can i just say first okay. of all i just had this conversation yesterday I have never seen it. Well, I have. It doesn't mean they don't exist. I have never seen a period piece that's this fun and this visually stimulating. And Do you remember also, Romeo like, and stimulating. Juliet though with Leo? Yeah, hold on. Oh, sorry. Forgive me. Where the cast is multiracial and oh, ethnic. Oh, true. And it's not addressed. It is just what it is. I love that. That's very interesting. In period pieces, what do you do? They go, well, it's got to be historical. So everybody uh, powerful was white and everybody else was brown and black. You know what's, I realized that too. this one is too. like, no, this is just a period piece and yeah. everybody's everybody and that's it. It's conveniently, his, when they have to be like, no, it's got to be historical. It's convenient that historically everybody was white. I know. It's like, oh, really? It's such oh, a does true it statement. Have, does it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't okay. know that. Keep it accurate. I'm sorry. I thought this was a made-up universe, but it has to be, oh, but in the 1600s, right, but this is a made-up 1600s. But it's so true. And it's like, look, I, I definitely think, jeez, um, I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even, I, I, I know about the show and I know. I watched it. Okay. I haven't watched the last episode, but I do know who Lady Whistledown is for those oh. people who watch because I asked my sister to spoil it for me because it's okay. But one thing that, it, this, look, this show is super dramatic and like doesn't need to be, but the actors are so wonderful. They're and good. The characters are so engaging. Are they all British? They all speak with the British accent. Ah. I don't think, I don't know if they're all British, but they all speak with a British accent. Yeah, so maybe yeah. they're all at varying, varying degrees. I'm sure there's Americans and Canadians and yeah. whatever thrown okay. in. But um, I just loved that you know, you don't see period pieces where the help is white and the king is black and the queen is black. And it's not a thing where we talk about it. It just is. That's what we need. We need that. So I it's normalized. I think, I think what we do is we realize, oh, that's very interesting because it's like it's being historically accurate. I don't think is the point, right? Because Bridget, well, it's a fake. It's a fake. So it's well, not like we're saying this is how Queen Elizabeth's town was. Also, da, da, da. it's, like, it's your interpretation of a thing that wasn't recorded. That was, yes. So you don't even fucking really you know. know. There are people that were really like, I'm going to get every frame. It's gonna yeah. Be yeah, sure. Maybe there that was, was a like black one person. How do you know? Like, his name yeah. is Stanley Kubrick yeah. and there is no one else. Yeah. The, but the, the thing I think with real entertainment like that is it's like look you can't do these i think we're get, we're, we're we're definitely drifting away from these like periodic sagas like gone with the wind and shit that's definitely like fuck uh, that shit fuck that shit it's gone <laughs> right and i think they plucked that shit they they lay, they got the white out on that shit real okay, quick just like, like okay, oh okay, shit bye bye yeah. yeah it's amazing how the i really want to know what the top 100 films are now can i tell you that don't makes me think me. of i don't watch the bachelor but my my sister does and i've i've i just oh, yeah. follow entertainment news here and there and they have there was this whole controversy about how the ho the the guy that started it what's his name Chris Chris Harrison mm -hmm. he did this oh interview. talk to me I know about this okay yeah. the girl uh -huh. that did the plantation Talking party about Ra Rachel is it is that her name okay Rachel that, does the plantation my, party that was if I were 2018 to and they're like it was back in her childhood first of all motherfuckers it was two and a half years ago second of all and this is the what got me he goes <laughs> he goes. Well, it, wa it was okay in 2018, but it's just not okay in 2020. No, motherfucker. It wasn't okay when it uh. happened, let alone 2018. It just... And then they were like, what did they announce last week? He's like, I'm taking a break. I was like, hey, you should fucking take a break. It's interesting that you said that. Me off. It's interesting. I feel like, well, that was inevitable because it was yeah. like, I saw the early cracks from Chris Harrison because he got a little... Well, the and show's really well, white. You got, you, got the, last you got the survivor guy, right? Who's he, the survivor guy? Is he the survivor the, the guy? The host of Survivor. Oh, okay. Smart guy. Yeah. Stays out of the picture. Got it, got it, got it. You guys are surviving. Here's yeah. the guy. Here's the other girl. <laughs> you guys are surviving. That's the survivor. I will survive. Another survivor. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I don't watch the show, but it seems that way. Okay. He's kept pretty much his fingers clean. Okay. But good. I think what it is, is there ain't no room for even the mildest amount of bullshit. Right. Part of it is sensationalism. So you know... They're going to pick apart what people say about it. My whole point with that is he shouldn't even have had a pony in the race. This guy should not should even not, be talking about it. You are a white it. man. Well, also you're a Successful white man. Why are you... And that's my problem is I think he got super high profile. And yeah. again, fame will be... It, fame is good enough to put something cool in the garage or slap you across the face. Isn't he the, the one that was with Trump on the tapes? Uh, I don't Remember? know. I don't know. Is that on true? On the bus, the Billy Bush bus, where he was like, 
grab him by the pussy. Wasn't he there? He wasn't I don't know. There? It seems like that was a packed bus. Okay, though. sorry, he wasn't there. I, I don't. Right. I don't I thought th- he was there. I don't My think bad. he was there. I do. Wrong I, info. I think the crack for me. Yeah, go ahead. Was when he revealed to have his own erotic fiction on the show. I'm sorry. What? He's an author of erotic fiction. Chris Harrison? Chris Harrison. Under like a And he pseudo? revealed it on the show. And I happen to be watching that episode. I've watched one, Adolfo. <laughs> it's, it's like Cheerios. <laughs> Did not know that. And I, I watched one and I was like, oh my God, this dude. Yeah. Because he, one of the challenges is they all had to write dirty, dirty words, right? Okay. And be out and be like, she was in the stables and he wasn't. And he was moving oh. the hay back and, and she forth. She removed his sweating. vest exactly. ever so, so slightly. <laughs> oh, so you've read it. <laughs> <laughs> you I have know a copy that one. in yeah. my room. <laughs> so he reveals in this challenge, which I felt was a critical move and the original failure. This is the point where I think the crack started to show. Okay. Is that he's in the episode. He's a little high profile, mm-hmm. if you ask me for a host. Yeah. He's been there a lot. Okay. He's good at his job. Mm-hmm. Can't take that away from him. It was a failure. Because I was like, one, you're revealing a very odd thing. Mm-hmm. It's like if I was like, all right, your next challenge is everybody take your shoes off. We're going to lick each other's toes. How about it? All right. I, I just wanted to reveal to you that I have my own OnlyFans and I'm a toe licking son of a bitch. So you got open toed shoes. Bring me your toes, bitches. Do you know what I'm saying? So it was like, that's weird to me oh for you to reveal on national television that, you're a toe licker. that you are an author of erotic fiction. I didn't know that. So he's kind of blowing up his spot. It's okay. a weird cross plug. Yeah. It feels very like he's pushing his product. Yeah. Because he was probably selling some online ebook for a hot minute before. Uh, that they, they dropped the hardcover. Joke mm-hmm. not intended. I got it. Right. Pun intended. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um I just thought it was a very peculiar move and it struck me as really odd. And it took the precedence of what that show I think is about at its damn core, mm-hmm. which is love. It's is not it? about sex. Is it about uh, love? No, it's not about love. But it is about it's a dating game and it's like yeah. look, we all take we're all taking these things way too seriously. I do think that's not something you take taken lightly Mm -hmm. i think excusing things away thinking you can mansplain at this particular stage to a black woman yeah it's that was crazy and i and i did go i was like let me go see what this is all about and he you know and i read the transcript and he was like but it was but but and i was like or you could listen to the black woman who is telling you how it should be. Or just shut the fuck up. Or just shut the fuck up. I mean. I mean, I'm real. You're like, a successful white man and you, you're you very good at like shutting the fuck up when you need to. I, I think, well, thank you for saying that. As I don't think I've done I it all the time. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I, I if I'm for honest. As long I've as I've known you. I've done it all the time. Yeah, yeah. But I do, I think right now, especially right now, here's the thing. It's not about 2018 versus 2021. It's about now there is this very clear you don't get the card of being a fratty douche guy anymore. <laughs> oh, like oh, he just he's just from the South and he doesn't know or the, something. That sort yeah. of bizarre masculinity, get out of jail free card that's happened forever. Yeah. Because I know it and I grew up around it. I know what it is. It's where I think everybody, humanity has been like enough, we're done. And so in that, I Held think accountable. it's really healthy to A, mm-hmm. take a look at yourself because mm-hmm. I'm not a perfect person. And None I've of said us are. stupid shit before. Yeah. Um, but also looking inward and then looking outward, but not looking out with, with your mouth. Just being like, let me look outside and see what the hell's going. It's like reading a room. You talk about stand-up comedy. Yeah. That's reading a crowd. And it's also like, whether or not you share those beliefs, it's still insane for you to have a voice and opinion or come with some kind of like, I know best. Yeah. You so guys are really coming down hard yeah, on her. I was yeah. like, uh, she was in a plantation So bye, dude. And now we'll see how exactly how important you are. Whatever. It's, and, you know, listen, the girl who did it, whatever, who, what's her name? Rachel? Okay. I'm sure she'll learn from her mistake. And if she learns I thought she was going to win. If she learns and grows, wonderful. That means because I don't, I don't think she you seemed, should just be like she should be banned forever. Well, you know? it's tough because of that show. You have what I think regular, like genuine people even struggle to show how genuine they are on that show. Okay, it's hard because well, it's hard. Yeah, because you're being you're getting, yourself. You're getting a prod from yeah. the producer, right? Yeah, and you're getting the clips of what they want from that story anyway. And so the audience reaction. You could be a genuine, and I felt like for just from this little mouth that I watched, I was like, yeah. oh, Rachel seems like a genuine person. I don't think she's out to do any, like they were ganging up at first and there was a lot about that kind of behavior and bullying and stuff. And I felt like it, it had been there I, I don't know how many times I've tuned in. I've tuned in a lot. There's only 25 seasons. You've but watched, you have it all on DVD. But I have. Yeah. It's a fun watch when you're like, fuck it, right? Yeah. Um, but I've also watched 
enough to know that that's always been there. Yeah. There's been ganging up on yeah. on both uh, parties all the whole time. Mm-hmm. It's interesting being nitpicked like that and being like microscopic about it. Yeah. I think it's fucking bitching. Yeah. Uh, just asking yourself, hey, is it right? That's all already cool. That being said, I'm going to switch the gears here on okay. you a little bit yeah. and just push in a positive direction. Okay. Because I do feel like, you know, he's brought us enough damage. Let's let him, let, uh-huh. let Chris Harrison take a break. Okay. Go, go to Tulum. He's going to timeout. What the fuck you're going to do? <laughs> okay. Um, go to Tulum. <laughs> you know, a guy like that. Go to Paris. To, go to Tulum. <laughs> yeah. So, that being said, are you familiar with the game show Jeopardy? Of course. Okay. Geo Party. All right. See. Yes. See. Okay. So, you know that recently, uh, Ken Jennings, I believe is his name. The took over hosting duties, Took right? over yeah. hosting and then left. So he's oh, got his I didn't own. Know that. I think he's got like a five picture deal at at at, uh, at Param- No, I'm kidding. I don't know what he's got going on. But <laughs> five picture deal. But he's got something going on, okay. and I think he's he left. This is up. me like d- delivering the news like a, a, an asshole. Okay. Uh, but nevertheless, I tune in. Right, I okay. love the fucking show, and especially lately because I just mm. feel like I have adopted my grandparents' habits. I just okay. wake up, I take the pill, I go yeah. fucking <laughs> I, love I, walk, it. <laughs> I walk outside. So I come home, I watch the Jeopardy, I love it. Okay. I'm always there for it. The Jeopardy. The Jeopardy. That's how you know you're getting old. Dear, I watch dear, the Jeopardy. Dear, 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 dear. In the Mars. <laughs> so, um, recently he's had to take a leave of absence. Unbeknownst, well, I think it it put the it put the producers and everybody on their heels to get somebody in the hosting position as soon as possible to replace who who was doing a banger job. That yeah. job is fucking hard. I bet. Do you imagine being like, I'm sorry, the answer is Capalapagos. Yeah. Or whatever, and you're like, Yeah, Capalapagos. <gasps> you gotta know. Yeah, you gotta know it. Well, they tell you. you know, well, yeah. yeah but like, you gotta know card, how to pronounce okay. a lot of like uh-huh. strange things. Galapagos. I'm just saying, uh-huh. I would be like, I'm canceled again? Uh-huh. Damn. <laughs> I said something stupid. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see this coming. <laughs> I was in the bathroom. I left my bike on. Uh-huh. Um, so. They're, 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 they had to rush to get a, a replacement, and one of the executive producers took the job. Now, this is a, oh, this is a very rare, rare thing. And they say he was kind of put into a position to do it because a lack of... I couldn't imagine finding a replacement for the great and mighty and powerful Alex Trebek. This right. guy was a legend. Yeah. So to see this Ken kind of... He came in like... I don't remember the Simpsons character. But do you remember that Doctor Schwinkelstein or whatever the 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 little nerdy oh, from boys. where? The Simpsons character that was like oh, the little oh, oh. professor. I don't remember. Okay, forget it. Yeah, okay. It's that's some dork shit anyway. Let's move on from that. But he he just came on there a little bit nerdy and then just owned it mm-hmm. and became so endearing and awesome. And I was like, yeah. this guy could do it for another twenty years. Yeah. Goes away. He's like, I got a thing. Peace out. Yeah. Where's my Ace of Spaceship? Hey, let's get the fuck out. I got out. a thing to record. I'll yeah. be right back. Black car's outside, chief. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So he bombs out. This guy gets in there. I watched the episode not knowing it's a replacement. Guy comes out. This guy, I'm expect. I, I didn't know what to expect. This guy's gorgeous. Like he's who, a who pe- is hosting? Look up, look up the Jeopardy. The, the new Jeopardy host. The new Jeopardy host. Oh, I have and 35 text there. messages. This yeah. is great. He comes um, out there. Um, and dazzles. New Jeopardy. Tell me if you find this guy is not um, like dorky. Yes, for sure. But you can't tell me he's not an attractive human being. Guest host Mike Richards. Let me see images Get involved. of this guy. Okay, I'm going to be really real. <laughs> not my type, though. <laughs> uh, uh, that's for an entirely too, different podcast. A little oh, too, I really want to. Kind of looks like that. American Psycho, if you want to ask me. Okay, sure. He's so definitely. Okay, he's bit, on the spectrum. What's his name? Pa- pa- J- um, who's the actor? Alec, Alex Trebek? No. Oh. For American Psycho. It's right oh, here. Oh, Patrick Bateman? No. no. Uh, K- uh, Christian Bale? Christian Bale. Mm. Looks a little Christian Bale in American Psycho okay. to me. I, I, I'm but gonna, apparently, Drew likes that. I'm going to say this. Okay. I fully agree with you. He yeah. does look like he, looks a little he like psycho. he like washes the skin cells off his body as to not leave a trace. For sure. Yeah, 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 and yeah. his business card is like perfect has to be bone colored. Don't yeah. you understand? That's off white, you yeah. dummies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're gonna eat the cost. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like let, let's talk about it. He doesn't have any like m- moves. He doesn't have the he je ain't. ne sais quoi. No. Okay. This I haven't guy, seen him. So he I don't have no. It, I don't know what you call it, but okay. that's a good word for it. Yeah. Uh, what's the Iranian word for like, oh, he's got, he's got a way about him or she's got a way. Oh, about I feel like there's so many things you can say. Really? I don't know. You mean like, yeah, she's a daughter. 
Is it just yeah, like something about it? Like yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. That's yeah. what I feel like. That's a magical thing that you can't really... There's no you go you can't go to acting school and get that or anything. Like yeah, that. you have That's it or I'm you saying. don't have it. You yeah. either have it or you don't. Yeah. Um, this guy, <laughs> there is almost it's almost in the negative. Like, oh, dude, your tank is empty. Mm-hmm. But in a different way, he's kind of like, hello, I'm just that guy, and I'm doing the thing, and you just go, this guy could clearly do it for 20 years. So I'm go- what I'm saying is they could put anybody in there, and I'm gonna think they can do it for 20 years because it's a miracle. Great. Yeah. But he did a great job, and I just wanted to say, and it's interesting that you weren't vibing on it as much as I was. No. That's fascinating. Not hot to me. No offense. No, to that none man, taken, none taken. But I'm sure a lot of people find him attractive. Just, no. Let's just say. Okay, go Let's ahead. go in here. Yeah. Not my type, but can see why you would think he's like suave. Yeah. On the ones and twos. Okay. Not my type. No. All right. A lot of Botox in the forehead. I feel like. Do you think so? I think so. No way. It doesn't move, buddy. This this is haunting me because this is an entirely different perspective. I thought you'd be like, oh, right. Like, that's no. great. Okay. Mm-mm. You think a robot has just taken robot over. Robot has the- taken over. <laughs> I thought a robot. This you know that, that the I don't know anything about female mind. No, the Chucky Dean. Happy birthday to you. That's what it reminds me of. I will never assume. Mm-mm. I can show you what I think. That's is hot, really <laughs> fucking funny. Is there a host of like a game show or somebody out there that you're like, damn, for like a host? No, I I know do not tough, think that right? for hosts. I yeah. do think that for like who athletes and stuff. Oh yeah, that's easier though. <laughs> but not the host. I know. Let me think. Who do we have as hosts that are hot? Do we have anyone? <sighs> Jeez. Well, I like the. There's a show I don't watch called like the meter of ha- ma- pain or the pain meter, the pa- the misery index, oh. the misery index. Misery index. And it's like is people Kathy go, Bates in it. I'm not even sure what the show is, but it seems like a show where they go, uh, a woman gets her toes cut off in Florida and doesn't realize for 17 hours, and then you have to be like, how busy, how bad is that? I do feel like um, they're incorporating all of these, which I'm I'm starting to notice, and I want to get your opinion on mm-hmm. actually. <laughs> <laughs> makes it perfect you're here mm-hmm. um there's a lot of people incorporating screens and um a lot of um even with the i saw with american idol they had like a giant screen of like people like with their zoom oh like they're using like audience screen elements for audience for uh, for audience or family members or like they're really using i didn't yeah they have see, no choice right now they didn't I, that's the thing is they don't have a choice so they had to shoot all of that kind of like, which I imagine there was really no way around getting a lot of people out there. But like these crews had to sh- go out and shoot these personal interest stories with all these people. And s- the backgrounds is so crazy. Yeah. It's just, it's just, I, that's a lot of work for a lot of people. Yeah. And it's amazing that you can even do it with all these restrictions. Yeah. But I, I, what I wanted to say is like, are we going to have, are we going to have shows comprised of, because I think this might be something, that comprised of like, say, you and me, we're sitting here. It looks like we're sitting here, but really one of it's us is the screen. screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's got to be the thing. Yeah, because I feel like that's how we're doing meetings and auditions and sessions right now. Mm-hmm. And that's how we have to shoot a lot of things yeah. because of restrictions. And I think it's going to be the new normal. And I think it's going to be that way for a while um, until things get something? better. We're vaccinated. How are, pe- how are all these people getting busted on the Zoom, not paying attention to the mutes and the video on and off? Oh, my God. Can we, like, like the thing with the epidemic. guy talking about the guys. That, remember the guy, the director that was talking about the actors? Oh, my God, his apartment's so small or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, how do you... There's so many people getting busted. How do I live without you? How do you not know? You, well, you got to be a novice at all this like stuff. It's like you can't, and you're not allowed. I think what it is is you're not allowed to have any sort of breakdown you got to be like boom Mm -hmm. because it makes for such quality entertainment to see somebody not quite handling things Mm -hmm. or like having a problem with it or something like it makes for great little videos for little viral things yeah yeah, that guy handled it really well though the actor in that video where he was like oh yeah so if you guys (laughs) just give me this role i can make the money to get a new apartment (laughs) and they were like oh my god i'm so sorry that you heard that and i thought well he handled Uh, that brilliantly also can i say though that in lieu of the fact that we're going into rooms we're doing everything on zoom right now it kind of shows you that you don't really need to go into a room until it's like the next level of like a session like a producer director session okay maybe we need to i think it's just cutting the fat cutting the fat man and i think the fat when when there was this and there was also like we there was a lot of people doing it the way that people were doing it in the 80s still 
Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like what I mean about the restaurant that put the to-go window in. Mm-hmm. It's like you either got the message. Or you didn't. Especially here. Yeah. I'm not talking about Texas. You rah. either adopt or you don't. I just think you don't have any choice. And even if you're a, even if you adapt and it shifts the next day, it's just like, man, it's that's what's going to happen for a while. Yeah. Um, I don't... There's going to be that weird... Uh, birth of new businesses and all that stuff too that are going to come from all of this meaning yeah. like you're going to you're going to have like I just think that there you're going to have like healthcare is going to change a lot probably right don't you think I don't know now I'm tar- starting to well, talk about stuff we'll I don't know anything about, about that. that they've yeah. been trying to change healthcare for a very long time and it hasn't been working you would think a global pandemic with over 500,000 deaths would know. do uh, something but it hasn't so far and that's a living completely in, different topic living in this country you're scared because like, if you get a personal injury oh, it could be God, a wrap knock on wood you don't because <laughs> you could, could be, be bankrupt yeah. so. or it could be one of those injuries that you're like I didn't heal right because I didn't get the proper thing yeah. you know what I mean like, right. I, always I couldn't get the now. best. I couldn't get the best treatment because I couldn't afford it. Yeah. That's some real talk about being yeah. adults. Hey. And that's what's so important about being us. Is that we're adults. We are. Um, I'd like to thank you for being here. And uh, I'd like to thank you for the spicy margaritas you made because they were really <laughs> they were fucking really good. Jamming, huh? Cheers to that. We might, we might have to. You do this sliced again. real habaneros in there, mm-hmm. and I could tell. It's real. It's yeah. it's real, and I have the time. Let's be honest. Yeah. And it was really it was else. the least I could do. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Please you. come back again. Thank you for kicking the peanuts over earlier. Yeah. That was a great moment. Let's. Well, we don't have to talk about everything we Sorry did. Sorry about that. Um, oh it was my lovely God. being here. I kicked over some stuff, but who wouldn't, right? Yeah. He got nervous. Look, I got a special guest. It's been especially fun. Uh, shout out to Adolfo. He's out on the field. Hey. Getting it. We'll see you soon, Adolfo. That's what we needed. Yeah. All right. Shout out to Alfredo, and we're out. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been Drew Stories, episode 16, and uh, I hope you have a lovely day, or even more of it, too. Bye. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Bye.